Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Labrik. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 94 for the year 2019, restructuring the Ministry of Information Affairs. The decree stipulated the restructuring of the Information Affairs Ministry under the Minister, followed by First, Bahrain News Agency Bana Director General with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary. Second, National Communication Center, the NCC. Third, Information Affairs Ministry Under Secretary, followed by Human and Financial Resources Directorate, Media Directorate, Under Assistant Under Secretary for Technical Affairs, followed by Technology and Broadcasting Directorate. Transmission and Outside Broadcasting Directorate. Assistant Undersecretary for Radio and Television, followed by Television Directorate, Radio Directorate, News Directorate, Creativity and Online Media Directorate. Article 2 stipulates the cancellation of Decree 83 of the year 2016 regarding the restructuring of the Ministry of Information Affairs. His Majesty also issued Decree 95 of the year 2019, restructuring the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. The decree stipulated the restructuring of the Transportation and Telecommunications Ministry under the Minister, followed by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, first, Communication and Marketing Directorate, second, Communication Directorate, third, Assistant Under Secretary for Resources and Information, followed by Information Technology Directorate, Human Resources Directorate, Financial Resources Directorate, fourth, Under Secretary for Land, Transportation and Postal Affairs, followed by Postal Regulations Directorate, Assistant Under Secretary for Post, followed by Postal Operations and Relations Directorate, Postal Offices Directorate, Assistant Undersecretary for Land Transportation, followed by Land Transportation Regulation Directorate, Land Transportation Projects Directorate, Land Transportation Planning and Studies Directorate, Land Transportation Inspection and Control Directorate. Fifth, Undersecretary of the Civil Aviation Affairs, followed by Assistant Undersecretary for Air Navigation and Meteorology, Air Traffic Directorate, Air Navigation Directorate, Director of Meteorology, Assistant Undersecretary for Air Transport and Aviation Safety and Security, followed by Air Transport Directorate, Aviation Safety and Security Directorate, Air Licensing Directorate. Sixth, Undersecretary for Ports and Maritime Affairs, followed by Assistant Undersecretary for Ports, followed by Port Operations and Technical Services Directorate, Commercial Affairs and Logistics Zone Directorate, Safety and Security Directorate, Assistant Undersecretary for Maritime Affairs, followed by Safety and Maritime Environment Protection Directorate, Ship Registration and Sailors Affairs Directorate, Article 2 stipulates the cancellation of Decree 78 of the year 2016 regarding the restructuring of Transportation and Telecommunications Ministry. His Majesty also issued Decree 96 of the year 2019 restructuring the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA. Article 1 stipulates that the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA, has been restructured as follows. Minister of Oil, NOGA's Board of Directors Chairman, followed by NOGA's Board of Directors, followed by and NOGA's CEO with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary, followed by Human and Financial Resources Directorate. Deputy CEO for Strategies and Control with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary, followed by Planning and Development Directorate. Strategy and International Relations Directorate. Operation Monitoring Directorate. Deputy CEO for Production and Petroleum Industries with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary, followed by Production Development Directorate, Petroleum Industries Development Directorate, Exploration Development Directorate. Article 2 stipulates the cancellation of Decree 18 of the year 2016 regarding the restructuring of NOGA. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 5 of the year 2019 for the Economic Development Board restructuring the Bahrain Development Bank's Board of Directors. Article 1 of the Edict stipulated that the Board of Directors of Bahrain Development Bank will be under the chairmanship of Khalid al Rumehi and with the membership of the following Subah Khalil al Muayyad, Tariq Jalil al Safar, Marwan Khalid Tabara. تالا عبد الرحمن فخرو غسان غالب عبد العال مريم عدنان الأنصاري and مروى خالد السعد with a three-year term. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the second edition of the Pitch at Palace GCC competition held under his patronage at Arad Fort. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa during the event. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of further stimulating economic growth and prosperity by investing in initiatives that support creativity, innovation and entrepreneurship amongst young people in Bahrain in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development program led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. In this regard, the Crown Prince welcomed Bahrain's hosting of the second edition of Pitch at Palace GCC, congratulating the winners and all those who competed for producing such innovative and inspiring presentations. In the opening speech, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Zayani, thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for supporting Bahrain's young entrepreneurs and emphasized uh, the important role initiatives like Pitch at Palace play in enabling the development of startups. He went on to explain that the program provides participating entrepreneurs with training, skills and exposure to a vast network of business people and experts. Azayani concluded by highlighting how the initiative aligns with the Kingdom's objectives to nurture an entrepreneurial ecosystem both domestically and throughout the wider region. For his part, the chairman of Tamkin, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, thanked His Royal Highness for his ongoing encouragement of Bahraini entrepreneurs, noting that the pitch at Palace competition reflects the Kingdom's ongoing efforts to spread the spirit of entrepreneurship providing a platform to showcase innovation and connect entrepreneurs with experts and industry professionals. The nine participating startups each had three minutes to present their business project before a judging panel made up of senior business people and other distinguished guests. The panel awarded this year's winning position to Shahad Zaki Mavi VR Studio from Bahrain. Aryam Ahmed Aryam from UAE came in second place and Nahla Sunni Dockwear from Bahrain came third. The winners will now compete alongside other startups from across the world at Pitch at Palace Global, which will take place this December in London. Pitch at Palace GCC 2.0 is organized by the Labour Fund Tamkin in collaboration with the Pitch at Palace initiative, launched in 2014 to provide a platform to amplify and accelerate the work of entrepreneurs.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the newly appointed Ambassador of Egypt to Bahrain, Yasser Mohammed Ahmed Shaban at Ghadibia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted Egypt's pivotal role in supporting Arab causes and further strengthening joint Arab cooperation aimed at maintaining regional safety and stability. His Royal Highness noted the depth of ties between Bahrain and Egypt, which continue to advance under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi. He welcomed the newly appointed ambassador and wished him success in his current diplomatic endeavors. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of further strengthening cooperation across various sectors to benefit both countries and their people. The meeting provided an opportunity to discuss regional and international issues of common interest. For his part, Shaban expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and highlighted his continued support to further enhancing Bahrain-Egypt relations. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the closing ceremony of the 16th edition of the Sayyid Junaid Alam International Quran Award held under his patronage at Ahmed Al Fatah Islamic Center. During the ceremony organized by the Holy Quran Custody Society, the HQCS, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's continued support to the service of the Holy Quran, noting the importance of events which act as as an educational platform aimed at spreading knowledge of the noble teaching of Islam as well as the correct recitation, tajweed and memorization of the Holy Quran. Sheikh Mohammed added that competitions in Islamic knowledge provide a conductive environment which fosters competition and motivation allowing participants to further enhance their understanding of both the Quran and Islam. The closing ceremony began with a statement delivered by the HQCS board chairman Ishaq Rashid al kohiji in which he highlighted His Majesty the King's continued support to events that aim to further enhance the teachings of Islam and the Quran. al kohiji further expressed gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed for the generous patronage of the event and welcomed guests and participants at the award ceremony. Al Kuhiji also noted the support provided by the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments and by the family of Sayyid Junaid Alam, uh, who has contributed tremendously to the award, which was launched 16 years ago with the aim of serving the Holy Quran and its teachings. Al Kuhiji underscored the kingdom's leading role in supporting Islamic studies, institutions, and projects that aim to serve the faith across various fields. The ceremony then proceeded uh, with the recitation of the holy verses of the Quran by three uh, con uh, contestants, Ibrahim Ayamdin from Russia, Mohammed Samir Mujahid from Bahrain, and Elias Hajar from Morocco, who stunned the audience with their recitation skills. The chairman of the High Organizing Committee of the Junaid Award, Abdel Ghani Al Umari, then delivered a speech in which he announced the names of the winners in the category of memorization of the Holy Quran as follows Ali Habib Al Shahoubi, Libya, Yahya Bilal Yusuf from Bahrain. Mohammed Isa Haj Asad from Syria, Mohammed Balu Abu Bakr from Nigeria, Elias Najib Hajari from Morocco. Al Umari then announced the winners of the recitation and good performance category as follows Mohammed Samir Mujahid from Bahrain, Ahmed Mashhoot Abd Shafi from Egypt, Abdul Karim Al Rai from Turkey, Ibrahim Khalid Abdul Yahya from Palestine. Ahmed Idris Al Smehi from Morocco. His Highness distributed the awards to the winners, congratulating their outstanding level of proficiency and the impressive competition demonstrated during the recital and memorization of the holy verses of the Quran. His Highness was presented with a commemorative gift by the Junaid Alam family in honor of his generous patronage of this event and his continued support towards the Islamic faith and its teachings. This year's event witnessed the participation of 140 participants from 70 countries who competed for for four consecutive days to win the prizes of the competition. Al Umari concluded the event by announcing that next year's competition will see an increase in participants to 420 from 85 countries and will be held in two stages.
The chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, met with the President of the Republic of Bashkortostan, Radhi Fakhirov, and conveyed to him the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his wishes for further progress and prosperity to Russia. The President praised the progress witnessed in the Kingdom of Bahrain and expressed keenness to further enhance the bilateral cooperation, especially in the industrial, commercial, cultural and tourism sectors. He also welcomed the Kingdom's participation in the Strategic Vision Group meeting between Russia and the Islamic world. The bo both sides have praised the bilateral relations and the progress witnessed in all fields expressing their keenness to further enhance these relations. SCIA chairman presented to the president a copy of the recent books issued by the SCIA. The meeting was attended by the ambassador of Bahrain to Russia, Ahmed Saati, director general of the SCIA chairman office, as well as a number of Russian officials. Under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, President Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the first edition of the Bahrain Health Regulatory Conference was inaugurated today in the presence of the Health Minister Faiqa bin Saeed Al Saleh, Labor and Social Development Minister Jamil bin Ali Hamidan, and Conference President and NHRA or Nahra's CEO Dr. Maryam Al Jalahma. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Themed safe and high quality health services, the first edition of Bahrain Health Regulatory Conference is organized by the National Health Regulatory Authority and continues for three days, which include several panel discussions, workshops, open talks, seminars and lectures that address the regulatory sides of the health sector in the kingdom in the presence of over 700 participants from different fields of the health sector in Bahrain and the region. This is the first conference that will cover all the regulatory issues related to health in terms of um, professional regulation, facility regulation, accreditation. Also, we're going to be covering the drug section, um, medical devices, continuous medical edu uh, education, as well as clinical trials. We have also four workshops uh, uh, through the co three consecutive days, uh, training in infection control, patient safety, accreditation, and, co and we have also a special uh, workshop for our inspectors to train them on the inspection. Healthcare is very challenging. Uh, it's uh, associated with risk and with uh, uh, patient uh, healthcare practitioner interaction. So standardizing it to the highest level of safety and quality is a very critical point and we are very pleased to come learn and share our experience uh, in Bahrain. Supreme Council of Health President Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa stressed on the importance of the conference, which comes to cast light on the regulatory process of the health sector in the kingdom and its significance in the process of providing health care services to patients. I would like to stress the following difference. Up to now, usually the public authorities they are going as in, to inspect and in any way to to like the, the people feel as a policeman. We want to change that. We come to help them. We come to organize the, 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 um, the healthcare facilities and to make them better for the patient safety and uh, you know, for everyone good. We are very happy to participate in HRA conference because that will give uh, you know, the aim for all the shareholders to meet each other and to create a lot of you know, invest for related to health industry in Bahrain. They will discuss for the first time the uh, GCC uh, rules and regulations for uh, registration, for pricing. Uh, there is a lot of workshops uh, parallel to the uh, conference uh, lectures. Uh, with very interesting topics, uh, extremely important. Um, you can see also many, many, many uh, important uh, people are attending the conference, which reflects uh, Bahrain as a uh, country of focus for, uh, for regulations, for uh, investment. The conference focuses on discussing and exploring the regional and global health regulation schemes, bringing together healthcare providers, pharmaceutical industries, healthcare organizations, patient safety, medical educators, and accreditation standard experts from the region and the globe with the aim of sharing insights on implementing and managing health regulations. 
Under the patronage of the Council of Representatives Speaker and Shura Council Chairman, the General Secretariat of both councils held a ceremony marking Bahraini Women's Day. Held under the slogan, Bahraini Women in Higher Education and Future Science, in the presence of Shura Council's Second Deputy Chairman, both Council's members and Secretary Generals, where they honored General Secretariat's employees with higher degrees. The Shura Council's Second Deputy Chairman, Jamila Salman, affirmed that the Bahraini women have reached a high status thanks to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's belief in the important role of Bahraini women in building a conscious, a civilized, and integrated society and the outstanding role of the Supreme Council for Women led by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa in supporting Bahraini women's affairs. She congratulated Bahraini women on the occasion, hailing their achievements on the national and international levels and their role within the approach of His Majesty the King. She also expressed thanks and appreciation to the Legislative Authority for their continuous support of Bahraini Women Affairs. The Secretary General of the Shura Council, Osama al Asfur, affirmed that the Bahraini women in an, are an integral part of the country's development, playing an essential role in serving the community and its development. He also conveyed the greetings and congratulations of the Shura Council Chairman Ali al Saleh on the occasion. Celebrating Bahraini Women's Day dedicated this year in honor of professional women in higher education and future sciences. The Shuran Representatives Councils underline Bahraini women's status, achievements and active contributions to promote the kingdom's prestigious image at regional and international levels. It all begins with awareness and awareness comes with education. To educate a woman you uplift an entire community. Women must stand in solitude and praise each other's achievements. I feel very proud of my country because we have advanced well beyond the stage of empowerment. The motto of our Supreme Council for Women is, I read, I learned, I participated. The yearly celebration adds a new dimension to Bahraini women's role, sheds light on their prominent achievements, and encourages them to make further progress in their studies and work. Well, I was very glad to be uh, among the rewarded uh, female staff today uh, on the Bahraini Women's Day. Uh, this year is so special for us as it coincides with the 100th anniversary of the public education here in Bahrain. On this day, I would like to emphasize that Bahraini women and their achievements uh, in higher education are only documentation of the clear contribution of the Bahraini women. And today I would like to thank Her Royal Highness, uh, Sheikh Sabicha bint Ibrahim, the Supreme Council of Women and the two chambers of the Legal, uh, Legislative Authority. It's a matter of pride that Bahraini women exceed the traditional stages of empowerment and development that's clearly witnessed year by year to reach the high status they enjoy today. The Shuran Representatives Council celebrate today the Bahraini Women's Day, commemorating her achievements and creative contribution to the development of the nation. Hiba Abdul Ghaffar, Bahrain International. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities announced finding the first archaeological evidence of a Christian society in Samahij. The findings were excavated by a team from the UK led by Professor Timothy Insull and Dr. Rachel McLean from Exeter University and Dr. Salman Al-Mahari from Baka. Professor Insull stressed the importance of this discovery and expressed thanks and appreciation to Baka, President Sheikh May bint Mohammed Al Khalifa for her efforts in supporting the project. He also expressed thanks to the people of Semahij for providing the facilitation needed for the team. Dr. Al Mahari said that this discovery affirms the existence of Christianity in Mharag. He expressed hope that the next season in 2020 will witness more discoveries in various locations in Bahrain. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, in cooperation with the team from the United Kingdom for archaeological excavation, announced the findings of their work, which is archaeological artifacts and remains that proved that once a Christian society existed in Samahij area. The importance of holding this event is to connect with the local community, because these excavations wouldn't have been possible without the permission of the local community, have been very helpful throughout. And it's also important because of the great significance of this discovery. 
We knew historically that there was a Christian community here in Bahrain, possibly between the 5th and 7th centuries, but we had no material or archaeological confirmation of this until now. So this building, the significance there is the building itself, which is exactly the right date and which was inhabited by this Christian community that's been missing from the archaeology of Bahrain. Sumahit has long been mentioned in the Christian history, but no archaeological remains have been found in advance. But now, after three years of a joint work between a UK-Bahraini team, studies showed that the discoveries found are remains that date back to the 7th century. Today we are here to announce a very important announcement about the archaeological discovery, the latest archaeological discovery we have found in Bahrain, which is very important one that fill a gap in our history and our civilization in terms of archaeology. It's the Christianity period in Bahrain. We have found this in Samahij. It's a building dated back to the 7th century before Islam, which is uh, belonged to Nestorian uh, uh, Christianity in the middle of Samahij Islamic Cemetery. This is a Rahab. It was before, before 10 years. I give my speech in their village. I told him that this is this here. He is Rahab here. He is staying here in Bahrain in Hilla, and he is making his prayer in there. And so in their Rahab, they call it Rahab there. He is praying there. But he is staying here in Samaij. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities will continue its excavation work in 2020 and will conduct further work in Samaij, moving to Adair and Galali. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef.